This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. You know I love Squarespace. Get started with a free trial at squarespace.com with no credit card required. And when you're ready to purchase a plan, get 10% off with the offer code RU. That's squarespace.com offer code are you? This episode is also brought to you by Mott and Bo. I have found Mott and Bo and they are fabulous. I love their jeans. They're so good. Listen, they make handcrafted, stylish, great fitting, high quality jeans for as low as $96. That's right, $96. They've been doing it for over 30 years in their own manufacturing facility, which enables them to offer these beautiful jeans at such a low price. Go to the website and use the offer code RU, RU, and get 20% off. It's mottandbow.com. I'll spell it out for you. M-O-T-T-A-N-D-B-O-W dot com. I love these jeans, kids. Insanely comfortable, incredibly affordable, and courageously simple. What do you want? What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea. What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea. What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea. What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea. We are so happy we have our our, our next guest is here. She is in the building. She is sitting down ready She's to... our friend. She's our friend. Kristen Johnston is here. Oh, oh stop. That's too loud. Uh, <laughs> the applause. The applause is too loud. Oh, my God. You know, I'm so looking forward to this because you have an opinion on everything. No, she You doesn't. have an no. opinion on everything. Well, what, what you don't have talking? an opinion. You're quiet and reserved. Oh, right. She's a, she's no, a... I, honestly, I don't have an opinion on everything, but what I do have an opinion on, I have an opinion yes. on. Yes. I think and you have an opinion on everything. Yeah. Really? No, yeah. I don't. I really don't. We're I, not I have an opinion, opinion on, that. on that. Yeah, yeah. We're, no, no, I really okay. don't. Like, about, about religion and stuff, I'm yeah. like, I don't really care. Yeah, really? Like, yeah. I go for it. Well, you know? you know, you have passion for the things that you, you care about. Now, where are you from originally? You're from D.C.? No, I was born in Washington, D.C. That my family's from there. There, my mother's side of the family, uh, old school, old like intellectuals. Was, no, actually, my great great grandfather started people's drug stores. Which oh yeah, was like, yeah, I yeah. remember people's. Okay, yeah. so it's like a Dwayne Reed down sure. there or whatever CVS. But anyway, long since we were out of it. But so uh, the, he made a pretty penny, mm-hmm. and my mother was sort of a debutante. You know, mm-hmm. had a full coming out there. And then my Ooh. father went to well, a different kind of coming uh-huh, out than you're uh-huh. used to, and. Oh, all right. I thought yeah. that would go over. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, sorry. Uh, and then my mo- my father went to the Naval Academy, uh-huh. and so my f- mother and father met at seventeen or whatever they used to do back then, and that we they moved to Wisconsin where he became a state senator, and that's where. Oh. I, but I was born in Washington D.C. and but then you grew raised, up in Wisconsin. Yeah, but a lot of my family's still in Washington. Where in Wisconsin? So. Uh, Milwaukee. Wow. Well, a little a little suburb known as White Folks Bay. Uh-huh. It's actually Whitefish <laughs> Bay, but we call it White Folks Bay. And when did you leave Wisconsin? Uh, I've always, n- I've never been there. Right, <laughs> no, right. right. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I left when I was 17 and w- to go to NYU. But mm. I, you know, I was a foreign exchange student twice during my high school years. You studied abroad. Yeah, because oh, I couldn't wait to get away. You yeah. know, I, I just, I needed other things. Right. Um, like, I went to, uh, first I went to Sweden. Uh, yeah. My people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I went to Columbia, South America, which was a blast. Wow. So, yeah. so you started really leaving home at about 14, 15. Yeah, 15? 15, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's, it's like a, I've you're, always you're, been that way. You're Just... Bob, Bob Mitzvah. Uh, Bob Mitzvah, that's 13. That's 13. But it's it's that time of, of a person's life when they first discover. Transitions. They're transitioning. They're transitioning. Right. They're transitioning. Yeah. You know? And for me, yeah, exactly. And for me, it was, you know, and I, that's honestly why I've always really had a huge connection with gay people I do know what it's like to be tormented because of what you are Mm -hmm. and I was a giant and I was tormented how how tall how how tall were you at 14 years old oh well at 12 I was 6 feet tall really yeah wow yeah oh that's tough for a little girl yeah it was horrible Swedes are Swedes are always very tall yeah but this was crazy I mean you know and so you capped out are you 6 feet now yeah I'm capped out so you capped out at 12 years old yeah 12 I peaked at 12 wow (laughs) and it's been downhill ever since Could you give me a tissue? Yes, darling. Tissue? I don't even know you. you. (laughs) Have you always, did you always know you were going to be an actress? Yes. I mean, I mean, you know, like my parents would say that like they'd walk by my room and I'd be making huge faces in the mirror, which I still make. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I think I always, yeah, I, you know, there's no other. 
brothers there's and sisters? There's no other road. Yeah, I have an older brother who is um, a classical violinist oh. and now uh, is a classical guitarist and teacher, and he's brilliant. Really talented Are you guys musician. friends? We're now we're friends. We had it wasn't easy growing up. Uh-huh. You know what's he, the age difference? Uh, two like two years each, and then I have a younger sister uh-huh. who I we're very very close. Huh. Yeah, always happened. Yeah, yeah. Because I wonder, you know, having children and and realizing early on that they are they're special or they're mm. they're really somehow enlightened or yeah. animated. Yeah. I mean, what do you do? What what? Well, if you're my parents, you try to kill it. No, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> um, you know, I don't think that there was. Um, I don't think that that was the way you looked at parenting then. You mm-hmm. know, I think it was. You know, we ate whole wheat. Um, we didn't have, you know, junk cereal. Really? You know, we ate at McDonald's once a year. You know what I mean? She really? tried to feed us well. Mm-hmm. And she also, my mother was also supportive of my, uh, of always of my acting, you know, mm-hmm. always, you know, if I wanted to go to this camp or that thing, she would always do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, as far as really understanding, you know, some sort of artistic, the, the, the artistic brain and frankly, the addict brain, mm-hmm. there was a lot of lack of understanding that, which is is rampant throughout America. So. Well, in hindsight, though, what 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 did I mean? It sounds like they did all the right. They things. did everything. They everything right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I have no, I have no anger, residual anything towards them whatsoever. You know, look, are were, are they flawed? Absolutely. Are there certain elements uh, that I wished I'd had? Yes, for sure. But they created me, and I'm great. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, no, it took me a long time to say that yeah. and mean it without being queer. But, I mean, I really mean it. Like, I think I'm okay now. Absolutely. So, I think you, know, you talk a little bit about it in Guts, too, yeah. in her book, Guts, which is Yes, which is so phenomenal. Great. Thanks, you guys. so many lives. Thank People you. It has. People really it. respond to that. Yeah, I know. What, what do you think that is? Is it because you just poured your guts out? It's because I told the truth, I yeah. think. I think that's what happened. I think people were like, they were just like, wait, what? This isn't some like, you know, packaged uh, with a bow, uh, esca- you know, cro- you know, skate over the bad stuff kind yeah. of thing. You know, it, it was the real truth of what really an addict goes through. And uh, I didn't know it at the time when I was writing it. You know, I thought maybe it would affect a couple people, you know, maybe you know, sell a couple book copies. And the, the, to, to this day, two years later, the amount of people, and you see it on Twitter, I mean, that are constantly yeah. writing me. Thank you. So this one woman, woman wrote me just yesterday and said, I, I don't know anything about her. She said, you have given me the courage to do something that's saving my life. And Aww. I don't know what it was, but I can only assume it's, it's maybe getting some help or telling the truth to herself or whatever it is. Did yeah. you read the audio book of Guts? No, Sally Kellerman did. Of course I did. <laughs> I love Sally Kellerman's voice. I, so I know, me too. Yeah. It's available on audio. It uh, is. On uh, it Audible, is. audible.com. Yes, if audible. you go to uh, Audible. RuPaul. And iTunes. Oh. And iTunes, yeah. yes. Uh, but Audible is one of our sponsors. Oh, so. I'm sorry. And I love Audible, actually. Yes. No, and I'm not even just saying that. Yeah, no, I, I really do. I, I'm, I'm like, I buy my stuff from them. Yeah. I buy my uh, Audible books. Yeah. I'm not, I haven't gotten many. I did Rachel Dratch's, which is great. Uh-huh. Did she voice it? Yes. That's amazing. Genius. Uh-huh. And of course, Andy Cohen's I had to. Yes. You know, yeah. which is also hilarious. But, um, but uh, yeah, I, the thing that's fun about Guts, the audiobook, is, you know, so much of it takes place in England. Uh, when I my stomach burst in in London, and so I have all these different English accents that I have to do. Amazing. You know the Cockney, and then the super high class, and then the sort of snooty, you know, young doctor trying to be high class. <laughs> and, you know, I all these different voices. So that was really fun for me. I got to do all those. Oh, can, That's you, can you do one of the voices? What's your favorite um, of the voices? I think it's um. Uh, D- Dr. Smithson Jones. <laughs> mm, yes, he. I don't remember what he said precisely, <laughs> but I think he really preferred if I had taken a bath. <laughs> You know, that guy. Oh, I love and it. then there was, of course, the regular. You know, Miss Johnston. I am your surgeon, and I am completely. Up front and cold and very, very handsome. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, painfully. Now, in the, the ordeal now, the book chronicles uh, how you basically your guts burst open while mm-hmm. you were in the UK. And, because of drug and, abuse. Yeah, yes. because of my Viking and addiction, yeah. And, and how, you know, you, you, you made the road to recovery. But um, um, now, with, with something, obviously, you have money. Did, 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 <laughs> I didn't at the time. But, but what about health insurance? If you're in another oh, country, oh. what happens? Oh, well, it's crazy. 
crazy. Um, I thought, I mean, I really, I was in the hospital for two months. In London. In London. Major surgeries, you know, two of them, like two operations, um, tons of meds, and God knows with me, extra pain medication, mm-hmm. um, a private room, etc. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was talking to my business manager, you know, as I was getting ready to leave, you know, freaking out, like, what do I sell? How, you know, can I get rid of this? How, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And I'm not, I was not, I had, it's, it was definitely like six years since Third Rock, and I'd done plays only. So, mm-hmm. And I wasn't as a matter of fact, exactly rolling it. But weren't you, know? you there doing a play? I was there doing a yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, exactly, in London. Anyway, so we were like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? We'll do this, we'll do that. Um, and I go to get the bill at the end, and it was 2,000 pounds, uh, the equivalent of 3,000 US dollars at the time, which is their health system, the wow, NHS health so system, little. which I didn't think. So you of were covered? Of course it is. Yeah. 2,000 would have been your... Your, your your entry to the your ER. Intake. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, I basically say if this had happened to me in the United States, I'd be doing porn for gentlemen who like their ladies tall, blonde, and long <laughs> in the truth. <laughs> that's right. And there's nothing, that's, and there's nothing there's, wrong with of that. Of course, no. exactly. I'm just saying that's what I'd be doing. Sure, yeah. To yeah. Turn a quick off. fuck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't. Yeah. Wow, what an incredible thing. Now, you know uh, you know how life happens in these sevens where it's seven, 14, 21, 28. Uh-huh. You know, wh- where did that... Uh, fall in your sort of evolution I, uh, on this planet. Yeah. Well, oh, I was. Oh, how old was I? I was third. I was thirty six. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I can't add. But well, thirty five would be thirty five would be that. Time. But that makes sense. But yeah, but it should. You know, it's when you're a drug addict, you you denial. You're in denial for two years. You know, I was. <laughs> I probably knew at thirty five I needed yeah. help, but it took that. You know, I definitely get that there are. Um, I don't believe in a lot of like stuff like that, but I definitely believe in karma, mm-hmm. and I I really ha- I really have started to because you know when you're when you get sober you have to start to think about higher power stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. but th- but you just mentioned getting sober, and uh-huh. uh, and I want to go on this before I forget it. Did your recovery because you went in as an addict, you were addicted to pills, your stomach exploded. Was that enough for you to say? I'm done because well, it, it's mental more than it is much yeah. more mental. And that's what most people don't understand. Right. That's what I'm trying to say in guts and stuff. And so many people have writ- written me who have loved ones who are addicts who are, who are like, oh, I finally understood why my mother did that or whatever, which is so amazing mm-hmm. to me. But because it's not personal. There is no, you know, look, you can be madly in love and if they're an addict and you're behind door number one, they're choosing door number two right. every single time. It's got nothing to do with you. It yeah. has nothing to do right. with you and yeah. you can't, you know, look, is that easy to say, you know, right. to deal with? No. I'm so not. did your journey begin anyway, in the hospital? Uh, it did, but only at the, near the end. Uh, it was a sort of, I call it my dark night of the soul, yeah. uh, which I think everybody has, mm-hmm. which I know you two have had, mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Those are the only kind of people worth knowing, I yeah, think, right. really. Yeah. You know, um, it's the moment where your comeuppance, you know, where you're just like, oh, I have to face this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it was just because of a, a bunch of different things. A friend sort of confronted me uh, along with a certain event, uh, just things. And, I, you know, because for about a month and a half, I was lying there. I was like, oh, my God, cigarettes or what? I don't know. I was mm-hmm. making up stuff why the, my stomach blew open. Mm-hmm. And the surgeon was like, well, I suppose it could happen <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that way but um anyway so um so i finally realized it and i uh i i i so i i called my fr- a friend of mine marcy and i said you know i'm worried about my drinking because i didn't want to admit yet that i was a pill addict uh-huh. and she said um well just go get it dealt with like you know like you get a shot yeah like like i have a weird mole right mm-hmm. <laughs> bugging me mm-hmm. well go figure it out yeah mm-hmm. go to the doctor and i was like it just made it sound like oh mm-hmm. okay. don't let me think about that okay, okay. great yeah i will <laughs> mm-hmm. so i did yeah so and, i and went with, from there i went to the the, the meadows where i went to um, oh, no right, i went to right. the rehab i needed rehab for sure it was is that like the hazelton or something the meadows is <laughs> <laughs> yes it's like hazelton no it's a rehab one of the thousands in the united states of uh-huh. america that is like hazelton yeah is yeah. it really? Are you being funny? No. no I'm being no, no. funny. I'm being kind of facetious. I mean, uh, but it they're is, both though. rehabs. Yeah. It's like saying, you know, my high school is the same as your high school. <laughs> kind of. You know what I so mean? So yes, but no. <laughs> same right. idea, yeah. different procedure. Same right? idea. Yeah. Right. Totally different area. It was down. It's down in Arizona. Hazelden yeah. is in Minneapolis. No, but which the, I Arizona love. is where Lindsay Lohan went. She, right? She did, I think. Yeah. I think she went to... 
I don't know where she went. Why did you choose that yeah. one? Because um, my, a friend of mine's father had gone there, and she said that she went to family week there and mm-hmm. said it changed her life. Wow. Uh, hugely. And she sort of explained why. And I liked it because it wasn't like star. It wasn't like promises or, mm-hmm. you know, yes. catering. Because I think that's why people stay sick, the celebrities. Mm-hmm. Because they're, you know, catered to private chefs, whatever. You need to be in a room with three other addicts uh, in your dorm bed, you know, doing this, you know, eating horrible food mm-hmm. and getting, you know, humbling yourself, you know, really humbling yourself because we are all the same. Mm-hmm. And that's what you need to learn. And people who can't stomach that, you know. And through that, what I got out of this, because I, we just became friends, really good friends when you were on the show. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. that's how I met you. When we no, hung out. we were friends before No, we that. were friends on Twitter, but we didn't hang out. Really? Yeah. Remember? And then you came when on. When you gave me the side eye? That was when you were that on the show. That was our first moment of love. That was like love. our first moment of love. <laughs> and then we, of course, you know, we have, now we talk regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to You head. have the same so, ba- the birthday. Same birthday, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the thing is, what I got from it now, because she ha- she blogs now, mm-hmm. so she's got this blog, and it's there's hey so- Joe's Big Mouth dot com, and mm. they're so wordy and so, and that's not a, a diss. They're so oh. you got to take the time and you have to go through them because they're so insightful Thank and so you. meaningful. Thank you. But I so, did think, you like I Hate Women? That was the la- latest one. I loved it. Okay, good. And she talks about uh, a big thing with K Joe with Kristen here is her. Uh, toxic friends and toxic relationships and mm-hmm. people around her. So I'm assuming when you got clean, you mm-hmm. probably shed a lot of skin. Well, it took a long time, right, to to get rid of. I'm a, I love toxic people. I love. Well, they're them. the most interesting, complicated people, especially for people with an active brain. You're yes. a highly intelligent woman. Thank you. You know, you, you know, you know, vanilla ain't gonna do no, that no, for no, you. no. But also, um, a Plus lot of Virgos. times, so yeah, we like and to also, and, and I like to, I like to cure, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely, yep. and um, I like to save and fix, mm-hmm. and um, boy, is that handy on Twitter? Uh-huh. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, no, no, I've, I've, I've different boundaries now. Yeah. Everything, yeah. Yeah. but at first. I didn't know and what I was so excited about was that guts was helping people Mm -hmm. so if somebody wrote me saying you know I'm an addict and I I'm I'm sober now because of your book or whatever I'd be like great here's my number let's Ah, hang out ah, you know what I mean (laughs) and and I really got screwed like bad Mm -hmm. because you know look people it takes a while when you first meet everybody's like you're you know how could you do that? We've known each other four months. And it's like, well, it took me four months to see that you're a crazy person. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. yeah. You know, it takes a long time sometimes to see people's true natures, especially even if you're smart, but especially over, uh, uh, you know, social device media. or yes. something. Yeah. Yes. I can tell in person pretty much immediately yeah. if you're, if something's wrong. Yeah. Um, and so I've been lied to that somebody, somebody pretended they were an addict and weren't. And I Just was, to get to you? Yes, but all the, had crises and all these things that I was like, oh my God, well, call this doctor and whatever. Uh-huh, and uh, uh-huh. nothing was true. Right. right. So, wow. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting thing though, because, you know, um, through this process of getting clean, getting to know who you are, and then uh, inviting the universe to continue to teach you about yourself yeah. and where you are. That's your... how, exactly how I feel it is Rue I really do yeah well you've opened it up mm-hmm. and and you know and because you've opened it up all of the the good and the bad have to come exactly. through because and you have most to work and through so it. I'm trying to now figure out a way to keep the you know keep them separate but it wasn't just social media I mean I have been as I say in the blog I mean you know Somebody tra- trashed me in high school. I'd, I'd be like, "You are my." You Push become forward. driven yeah. to win yes. them yes. and seduce them into your life. You're just right. convinced in turning them over. You you're going to win them over. Yes, it doesn't matter the five thousand people that are loving you. Yeah. It's that one person. It's the one who doesn't. And if you can't, yeah. you're going to die. And trying. I do mm. realize that's insane. That yeah. is so insane. And you know, so many people do that. I know. I think something. In that's our- why the. I mean, the blog is called "Slaying a Different Dragon." The the blog uh, the entry that she's referring to about toxic people is called. Yeah. Slaying a different dragon, because once you slay this massive dragon of of drugs and addiction, all these other things come dragons up. come out yes. of their little hidey holes, yeah. and all of a sudden you're like, oh no, I've been right. this and that, and I'm so on. Un- you know, I didn't know. But how does one navigate then? Because, and we'll say this before, a lot of people when they recover, um, a friend of ours has come to me through recovery and, and relying on me and asking for support, and said to me one night, but the problem is I don't know who I am 
without alcohol. My right. identity was in my alcoholism. Right. Yeah. That's so what now, Chris Farley felt too. And I that's mean, what I it is. So, who, it so it's it's just like you're talking about a rebirth. Yeah. So how do you navigate these toxic friends? And when you find them, it's not very easy. And you know how hard it is to say goodbye to these people that you well, know. Well, you're saying two different things. Horrible. You're saying, first of all, uh, you know. Finding my, the identity. My, well, my right? identity is tied to the drunken me or the high me. But now that you're reborn. Yes. As well, this new person. Well, how do you navigate that? Well, right. the truth is what happens is you, you do it one. One day at a time. Exactly. You, you, are, you talk about re- you being do. reborn. You do. You are like a child and you treat yourself as if you were a child and you have to take it very slowly. Now, we talked on this show also about a book called Toxic Parents by Dr. Susan Forward. Are you familiar with that No, book? but I could use it. Well, <laughs> you know, it's it, it deals with uh, with toxicity in your life and, and people and how we draw people to us that are similar to our toxic parents or the toxic Mm -hmm. family we come from. So, you know, navigating this is a day-by-day process and it's a very slow process. It's not overnight because you don't become an addict overnight. No, you know. No, you, yes. And that's the other thing you think you're, I should be, can I really quick? But it hurts Can I just refer to the, this is, um, it's not, I didn't write this, but I included this in my blog, but it's this brilliant little piece um, in HuffPost written by Nancy Collier, a psychotherapist. Uh, And I just think it's it's incredible. She said, we all have people in our lives who have profoundly harmed us. Sometimes the situation with the other person has changed. You may have forgiven them. They may may have taken ownership or expressed remorse. Uh, Other times, the same harmful behavior goes on. To your reptilian brain, however, it doesn't matter which of these scenarios is true. With trauma, the body's memory of the harmful harmful person can remain frozen at the time of the trauma. It's about the expectation of what we're supposed to do with the people who make us feel toxic. Toxic. Many people believe that in order to be spiritual, they need to be able to open their heart to people who've done them harm and no longer express negative reactions oh. in their company. I'm often asked, not me, but Nancy Collier, what is wrong with me that I can't feel open, loving, and calm in this person's presence? Isn't being spiritual about being able to love the person who hurt me? Isn't forgiveness the essence of spirituality? And she says, first, the body's reaction to someone who's harmed you is simply that. The body's reaction, something that happens. You don't choose it. It's not an indicator of your spiritual maturity. In many cases, no amount of psychological or spiritual work will change this. Um, and you should take the, I- the idea off your plate that you should be able to feel good in their company. Secondly, being able to open your heart to someone who has caused you tremendous pain is not a test of your speech- spirituality. People deliberately put themselves in these people's presence and in an effort to develop forgiveness or compassion. And yet, if your heart is not open and the desire to be with this other person is, em- is not emanating from a place of true compassion, it does n- you no spiritual good to do what you should. And then she goes on to say, basically, the, the most spiritual thing you can do is to follow your lead. Mm-hmm. What, you know, listen to yourself. Mm-hmm. What do you need? And that was, it just was like bl- mind blowing to me when I read that. Because I love that. You know, because I, I, we talked about this before, Michelle and I. I have found myself in situations where it's like Groundhog's Day, where it's the exact same situation where another actor is playing the role of, say, my father. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I've, yeah. and I me too. keep yeah. finding myself in these situations yeah. until I can work through it. And heal it the right way, just like in Groundhog Day. By the yeah. way, mm-hmm. you know the the the, the moral but, of the but story. But so, are you saying when that person, your father, enters your life, do you embrace that, or do you stay? You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. I don't know it's hap- I don't know it's it's the same scenario until some type of trauma happens. Yes. And you go, oh my god, it's oh that my guy. goodness, this He's, is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what happens is over the years, I've been able to heal it little by little. Every time it's mm-hmm. come through, I've healed it little by little. Just recently, I was able to work through something in that same way to to the place where. My, my, the antidote is to stay in the moment. It's like, Rue, yes. you are not that yes. little boy waiting yes. on the porch yes. for your father to yes. show up. You are here yes. right now. Yes. And you could simply, And you're not at five minutes from now. Mm-hmm. No, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are here right, right now. The antidote is to be in this moment yes, right now. Yes, it here. is. I mean, and that is moment, the best part of the, 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 a lot of phrases they say in AA, whatever, and 12 step programs. But my favorite 
is you know one day that I take it one second you have to you have to yeah because we project we project into the future uh, and then there's no way you're not miserable if you do that exactly there's just no way your power is in the now it's not in the future it's not even in the past it's not even now really (laughs) well you know what I I have a choice if you just are here that's your power but like we're three very similar people in this room of of we have forced things to happen sure you know we have you know you have been like look I might be seven Seven feet tall and a black gay man, mm-hmm. but I'm going to be come a superstar and a white and woman. I, exactly. And a white <laughs> woman, exactly. Basically, you know it's funny because my father, my father always had uh, uh, loved the girls. I have uh, three sisters, and and all the co- he was a ladies man. He right. loved the ladies, right. but he didn't really know what to do with me. Yeah, guess what? I bet I he did. didn't love the ladies either. You know what? Guess what I did? What I made myself <laughs> into the most beautiful. Uh, woman. <laughs> You can't touch this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's true. But I you know, know what it is. It, you, we are always doing that. You know, but that's the moment where you have to go. Um, that's the forgiveness moment. That's the moment where you go, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for your quirks and your issues have created something that has given me this Right. Amazing life where it's I am. Like, it's like the sand, and that's in, why in I'm clam, so grateful. In a clam that creates the pearl, you know that friction yeah. is what gives you the moxie yes. to turn you into what you yes. are. And to, I you mean, know. when you know the kids who tormented me when I was, you know, because of my height and whatever, and you know, I wanted. I write it in a chapter in guts. You know, I wanted to. Later, I wanted to say thank you. You know, when she was like, "Sign my autograph." You know, having like the queen bitch sign mm. my autograph. You know, and I, I couldn't believe it. It was just the moment of like winning. You know, mm-hmm. of your life. Of course, basically. it's that moment. It is. But then I also, I, I was like, "Gosh, I wish I had written thank you for making me an interesting person." Mm. You know, thank mm. you for 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 letting me know that that life isn't handed to you on a silver platter mm-hmm. nor should it be yeah. if it and is it's not worth it it's not worth not it life. and that anyone interesting was an, a complete freak yes at yes. some point outcast in their lives. made fun of uh, everyone bullied. i know who's successful in the entertainment industry at least was a complete because we're the weirdos yes. yeah. yeah what did you write on her autograph I wrote. Go fuck yourself. I, no, no. I want. Well, at first, I no. I write this whole thing where I, I first I was gonna. I wrote. Um, uh, Amy, um, it must suck to know you peaked at twelve. But then I didn't. But I didn't. I didn't write. You had I something did. in common, you and Amy. I, I didn't. I didn't. So I ended up writing. You know, nice to see you. You know, whatever. Right. right. I don't know. But you know what? Even if you had, you know, I always fantasize about being able to have a, a, a sharp comeback with people, which yeah. I've never been able to do because no. I'm not that girl. No. You know. No. But uh, yeah, although you are kind uh, of well, with me know, anyway, no, but not, I'm slow. But so. no. But yeah, I wanted to do that that cutting thing where people where you could we say that sort of nasty well, thing. You know. Once. But well, you know. But the truth is, it's only important important to you like had you told her um oh thank you for made, making me you know an interesting person because right. she was cruel to you i don't you. think she would have understood she wouldn't that. have understood no. it it's not it was oh, something God, no it was, she it was, was thrilled i mean she was she had no that's the whole thing is these people who cause you such harm right. they're like clueless or oblivious clueless. Clueless. you would have told her she would have been like thank you she's right. been You're telling welcome. people for you and i had to disguise who she was and everything because right. i didn't want you know but i mean these people who caused me so much pain you know they've probably been telling yeah. their kids like you know that she's girl from friend. third rock she's right. a real good yeah. friend of mine and you know we used to hang out you know absolutely whatever. Yeah, and like they believe it of yeah. course well you know what the same with me trying to convince my father he he had no idea what the trauma what had happened to me he had no idea it was in my head because i have yes. a vast imagination yes. i thought that he was doing this stuff maliciously yes. and and he had concocted this whole scheme to make my life a living hell but to <laughs> this he wasn't that deep no that was my well you know the one his one you know he was maybe a, a bit neglectful sure you yeah, know yeah so there's but that, mostly but yes. to himself it, it yeah. wasn't personal yeah the, it was he neglected himself and was i was he just an got addict visual, sure yeah, what do yeah, you yeah. got you yeah, know yeah, i you know yeah. he it gambled, sounds like i mean yeah he drank, so, yeah he smoked, sounds like he did the whole women 
Yeah, so yeah. everything, the whole yeah. thing. But uh, you know, except Rue. <laughs> well, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> everything except my son. Aww. It was. Aww. It was. It, you know what? It. I have had a. You're America's fabulous, son now. I'm America's son and, and daughter. I've had a fabulous time, and I've been able to work through, work through all this stuff. Yeah. Thankfully, you have to. You though know? you have to work through. It. But yes, that is the root of the toxicity. You have to, to survive. You know, mine some is, people do the opposite. Yeah. Hey guys, let's take a quick break, and then oh, when we God, come back, please. Can I? What, what, can we, I get an ice cream? <laughs> We come back. We're going to talk more about and fun things. Fun things, exactly. Like addiction. Yeah. When we come back. All right. <laughs> now, before we discuss addiction and you know fun things like that, we received some really great emails at RuPaulPodcast at gmail dot com and tweets about your Squarespace websites. This is a tweet from Ian Bernardo. Now, I recognize the name because he follows me on Twitter and he follows Michelle Visage on Twitter. It says, hey, made my Squarespace site thanks to you guys. Hope to hear what you think about it on the show. And his website is ianbernardoart.com. Man, oh man, you turned it out, Ian. This is gorgeous. Now, Ian runs an awesome art gallery. And on his site, you can see high-quality images, a bio, a contact form. It's just perfect. The site is clean, it's beautiful, and has everything he needs. Now, get a free trial with no credit card required by just going to squarespace.com. When you're blown away and ready to confirm a plan, just use the offer code RUE to get 10% off, you'll be getting a great deal and helping to keep What's the Tea free. Thanks again to Squarespace and keep sending in your websites to RuPaulPodcast at gmail.com or you could tweet them. Uh, that's Squarespace. Dot com offer code Rue. All right, we are back with our special guest, Kristen Johnston. And we are talking about so many things. We want to lighten it up a little bit. A little. You know, you know, you, you <laughs> Well, it's so interesting to us. It I is know. interesting, but I know, you but have been It's not interesting to me anymore. I'm I know, just kidding. I know, you have, I know. Been, I you have been through hell and back. Mm. And now you're back on top with this gorgeous show, The Thank Exes, which so got much. picked up again for how many seasons you've been? Well, doing? yeah, we're in we we just started our fourth season, uh, November fifth. Uh-huh. And uh, they just they they picked us up even before we aired the fourth season. They picked us up for the the back twelve. So in other words, we're doing a full season of wow. that's amazing. Thank babe. God, finally, wow. Congrats. it's great. You know, honestly, I will tell you, it is the best money job I've ever had. And I'm, you know, I will not. I am not a BSer. I'm being totally honest. Better like, than thirty uh, than Third Rock. Third Rock, yeah, it was. It it's is. so hard to get. Well, thirty I'm, Rock I'm, and Third Rock. I'm red. I know, but I'm. Trust me, you don't have no idea <laughs> yeah. how, how often people say that to me. But um, I, I, I think it's a lot to do with me. You know, yes. I mean, obviously, I'm sane and er, sane. Yeah, and you're present, for and it. I'm present for it, and I pre- can appreciate it now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and so I am. Uh, you know, the the fact that every single person is cool, mm-hmm. like that, I really like them. Mm-hmm. I really that like says a them. lot, a lot. Yeah, and I trust them and I love the people who are making it and TV land loves you know sitcoms as opposed to networks that are always you're always like the little the, mm-hmm. the step dirty stepchild they don't want to talk about you know you, you know they're like you know you're their god you know did they, you ever think that you weren't going to come back like this big did you ever think well oh this my isn't god. big I think it's a perfect size <laughs> you know TV land is you know I hope it reaches more people they're just starting though I know they're just starting to create original programming but they've so, got two but what I'm just trying to what I'm trying to say is it's yeah they have well they have more than that they have a I don't know seven or eight no I mean sitcoms I know but two that are six like okay, that are right you like, and the Betty White hot in Cleveland you, hot in yeah. Cleveland and the us. exes they used to have happily ever after happily ever after didn't get picked up again oh, although so wait, man. people liked it so wait, is that man. I think Soul Land is still around Soul but man, I, yeah. I, you guys I don't know the, the ins okay. and outs so I liked uh, that TV Land, so sorry I know I, people loved it so yeah. I, I don't know uh, the Kirstie show was canceled uh-huh. which Shocker. I was I was on oh don't get nasty uh-huh. you mean um, truth oh sorry anyway yeah. how about how the people who think I look like Kirstie Alley really yeah she's tall too that's it end of she's huh. tall you're tall period I mean I'm not kidding you every day people no. stop you on the street uh-huh. and say I loved you on cheers huh <laughs> Well, this or, is what I said. Or, um, you know, that, that, that stuff is working. You remember when she was the on the diet, diet stuff? Right, right, right. And I'd be like... <laughs> yeah, but I want to say this. If they're saying, we loved you on Cheers, 
that's a compliment. How drop dead gorgeous was she Kirstie was Alley on Cheers? Yeah, right. but she, yeah. she and, and was I, gorgeous. I love her. I mean, look, whatever. She, but she is a little bit older than I am. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. About I, by like ten years. Yeah, but right. you know what? People are mistaken a lot. A lot of I people don't care. Are, they I, don't, I don't care. And also, it's a similar name. Whatever. People do it sure. all the time. Yeah, they do it all. The they time. do it all the time. I, I prefer that. They used to think I was a man, so whatever. Well, and yeah. there are worse things than and that. And there's worse things than that, yeah. darling. Could be Carl so, Malden. So yeah, I could be Carl Malden. You're back. I love Carl Malden. Yeah. So you're back on the. There are worse things in Carl Malden. Mm-hmm. There are. You, you've been uh, you picked up again for another season. Yes, what? and I really love this show. I think it's very, very funny and clever. And I, you know, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, listeners of this tea, tea podcast, uh-huh. uh, please give it a chance because I really and I think this season is the funniest. It's the funniest comedy I've ever made. Wow, that I, I've you know, ever it's made. It's really good. Yeah, I yeah. enjoy it. And unfortunately, I wasn't really around for season three, much of season three, because I was sick with lupus. Right. But right. Then no, Leah, we don't have to go down that bummer, yeah, right. bummer lane. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Um, Let's I pick was, it up. I have lupus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Well, I always say it now on set whenever, I, like, if I'm late or whatever. I'm like, I have lupus. <laughs> Great excuse. <laughs> it is. I use it for everything. Or if I forget a line, I have lupus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, which I'm now in remission for, th- from, Yay. thank God. Uh, it was really a hellacious uh, couple months and uh, six months of trying to be funny and like not being able to hold my own head up. Wow. Yeah, it Literally. Was crazy. It was that bad. It so was. it was horrible. Wow. And they were just wonderful uh, and very patient. But anyway, so now I'm, I'm back. They're all, yes. Everybody's like, you're, you're, you're funny again. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm better now. You know, it's just amazing because, you know, here we are in Hollywood, USA, and, you know, there are a lot of people who, who never really get that first break. There are a lot I know. of people who just never... And oh, you, I know how lucky I am. You are very, very, I'm very lucky, lucky with your because health, also, with your career, I understand, with everything. sir. I don't get it, but that's the deal. That's the deal. If somebody wants me around, uh, I honestly believe that like for a woman who is 46 and I've never had plastic surgery I get once a year I get a bindi Botox shot right between the brows uh-huh. that's all I've ever done because you know I have a fat face now it's paying off uh-huh. I used to hate it now I'm like now I, all the other actresses are shooting their asses into their faces right, and right. now I'm like well I already have a fat one <laughs> so it all works out but um but uh so so Yes, so that's been great. But anyway, and to, you to are get, lucky, and you understand. You're grateful for I'm so grateful. this thing to happen I'm at so this grateful. point because the truth is, most people do, people take it for granted. People think that they read uh, Deadline Hollywood and they mm-hmm. read all the trades and they go, "Oh, this one's got a job. This one's got a job. Yeah. Everything's happening." But most people don't get jobs. No, most no. people do not get no, most it, really great. Really people great. Don't yeah, get jobs. Absolutely. I mean, we get on our show. We get these guest stars that are like, "Oh my God, they're so great." <laughs> Who who, who like just, do, oh who, my god! Who, now who I'm gonna you, blank. I'm gonna what? blank. But, but like because people you like uh, Dietrich that. Bader and Judith Light yes. and bibbidi bobbidi bob. Yeah. But I mean the list goes on and on. They're, they're amazing, incredible actors, and just really you know we had Stacey Keach, uh, wow. just brilliant, funny, and you know I was asking Diedrich, I was like, what's going? You know why? Why I'm glad you did the show, but it's a little TV land show, you know. And he was like, there's nothing else out there. Right. There's nothing. Isn't that else. crazy. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh my god, no one's working. Right. You know, no one's working. Uh, other, you know, in my field, sure. the comedic, the funny, you know, where sitcoms used to be when I first hit L.A., you know, I would audition for, I don't know, they would make like 600 a year, yeah. Yeah. you know, and I would audition for all of them. I'd be like, you know, trying to be a little a Jewish little Jewish princess and I'd throw on a wig and <laughs> stop talking like, oh yeah. my God, you know, how, whatever. How long were you here before you got uh, Third Rock from the Sun? Um, well, okay, I was flown out here to shoot the Martin Short show, uh-huh. which was a variety show. Yeah. And I auditioned for it and pl- like played his sort of, uh, his producer mm-hmm. of his show. Mm-hmm. So I did this whole thing, whatever, this character thing. And as the week went on while we shot it, my skirt got shorter, my boobs got bigger, and I basically became Heather Locklear. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not... It's that funny on their recommendation oh yeah they made yeah. of course I yeah. mean they kept they just diluted everything that I and I was like yeah. I didn't know I was 25 whatever yeah. so uh, then so then I go back home to move out to LA mm-hmm. for my Martin Short my big break mm-hmm. on ABC oh my god 
And uh, I come out here, and the night before I come out here, I'm throwing this huge party in New York to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. My big hurrah, last hurrah, New mm -hmm. York. And that day, um, they called me and they said, um, uh, Andrew Martin became available. So, oh, and there, you can't really like hate her. Right. No, it's amazing. Yeah. And anyway, I do wish that it had happened a little a little sooner right um before right. like before That's the party really, it was it was not that. fun so anyway no. i came out to la this loser like fired like oh mm. nothing was ever gonna happen to me mm -hmm. and um and six months later i got third rock and if i hadn't been fired from the martin short show i would not have been contractually able oh to goodness. do third rock wow so Wow. See, everything it happens all works for a reason. Out. Yeah. It all works out. That is crazy. And how many seasons did you do Third Rock from Seven, the Seven, I think. Seven? Yeah. Did you get a whole bunch of money from no. that? No. No. What? No. Why not? You only get a whole bunch of money if you have a have if you own have a percentage of the show, right? And I had zero zero point zero, right? As did uh, you know Joey and uh, you know French. So yeah. we so you get you get a nice chunk of change when it reruns one time. Mm -hmm. And then a nice chunk of change when it, you know, that, then a quarter of that and then mm -hmm. zero, you know, right. basically. I mean, I don't know, maybe four and I'll get like 150 a year or something. No, but nothing. People think I'm like set for life from that show. And that's not true at all. Right, right. John Lithgow is set for life. Oh, because he, he owned part of it. it. He had a nice ch chunk of change right. from it. Yeah. And when you were doing that show, did you have, As he should have. As he should have. Right. Did, at that point, did you know that Joseph Gordon-Levitt was going to be no. the superstar? No. I mean, I, the thing is, Joey and I were closest uh, I think well, French and I were really close too but Joey and I like hated what was happening I mean we were both having our own growing pains with fame right. and stuff right. like that he didn't want to be Tiger Beat Kid right. at all right. and I was just a mess so we sort of like you know just I just loved him so much we were so, I, he didn't know what was going on in my personal life right. but I you know of course I hid that from him but um, but he's the kind of kid who you'd be like uh you should read um, Catcher in the Rye. And the mm -hmm. next week, he'll be like, oh, what about when Phoebe says blah, blah, blah? You know, uh -huh. he'll start quoting it. He, like, trusts you, yeah. you know. And he turned to me once and said, um, I just, I knew he'd be great at whatever he did. I didn't know he was going to be a superstar like that. But he did turn to me once and said the greatest thing probably any man, male, has ever said to me. And he was 16 at the time and I was like you know why are you having so many you know you don't like this girl or this girl or whatever and he said you know what I think it is I just keep looking for someone like you Aww. oh my goodness and he meant it what a and he meant it. because you know what he, he's clearly really smart he's an yeah. intellectual yeah. you're so so smart almost to a, a, a detrimental state Ooh. because it's like um, it's hard how are you going to find, find a guy to live on that level how are you going to find people who, yeah. who can be it's a very yeah. lonely place to be you know when you I don't think that it's smart. that lonely dumb it down bitch dumb it down I don't think it's that lonely and I'm not lonely. that smart I mean I'm facile I, uh, I'm i quick witted right but I'm not you know some erudite you know hello well, I'm not talking about that you kind of smart. Side. I'm talking about a super sensitive. No, you're talking in about intuitive. You're talking about that I'm too strong for men. Oh, I, th I think that's part of it. I yeah. think that's part of it. But I think that people who who are so <clears throat> intuitive and so um, no, you're an intellect, sensitive, you intellectual. Are. You yeah, know, but you're a dumbass. So what do you know? And that's why I hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> so and then so the 30 30 third rock from the sun <laughs> ends you have like six years in between and this then you know the world comes to an end basically and then you rebuild from there yeah and yeah. here you are yeah and the, and the beginning of that rebuild was guts i mean that's what got me out to figure out who I was and writing the book, writing the book, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the and that saved my life. I mean, I, I it really did. It well, just... I want everybody to go out and get this book, and you know, we, of course. Uh, but it's also it's funny. You know what I mean? It's, like no, it's, it's not funny. Some, like that's it's right. not a lecture. Like that's the whole thing. And I think that's why it connects with people. Anyway, blah blah blah. My book, absolutely. But, but uh, you know, I just want to just uh, say that if, oh. if you don't want to read the book, you can also go to Audible <laughs> mm -hmm. and and hear and listen uh, to it and listen to it, which is. Also, but you get to experience you. Yeah, I. You know, book. a lot of people love that the most. I read yeah, it. Really I'm gonna buy it on Audible to hear That's her. You too. should. Yeah, I mean, apparently. I mean, I don't know. I'm a little too you self conscious. Know. No, no, no. Honestly, I mean, people say they love it. Oh, so I'm, I'm gonna trusting do it. that. But I'll tell you I honestly. Just, I hear it and I'm like, 
you know, it's yeah, that way no, of seeing just, yourself on TV or whatever. And you're just, like, oh my god, oh, do you my not ass watch is so yourself? big. Do you not watch yourself? Not, I, I, I do to yeah. see how things work and yeah. whatever. I don't relish it. Yeah, you know, I'm not like, God, am I gorgeous? <laughs> But now I watch Third Rock and I'm like, I was so pretty uh-huh. and I was so unhappy. Hindsight. Oh my God. I needed a Look bitch. at my body. Wow. And I didn't even know. Wow. And I was worried about my thighs. Mm-hmm. That is so you crazy. Know. And I wish we could all have that experience. Where, But have it in the now where you can say, you know what? I'm going to look back at pictures of myself the way I look today. Right. And say, oh my goodness, you were hot but that, stuff. But that is what I've been able to learn how to do and without being arrogant or whatever. But uh, the slow, slow process of beginning to love yourself. And that's the key to everything. It's the key to recovery. It's the key to happiness. I believe it. Uh, I write on the blog. I have this this thing where I talk about the hole, filling the hole. Mm -hmm. And we all have that hole Mm, that we're just trying to fill. Fill, 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 (laughs) fill, fill. fill. Oh, shut up. But you know what I mean. The the soul hole. Something inside you where you're like, you know, the gambling, the women, the this, the the food, the the, sex, whatever, the success. All this uh, tries to fill it. And, you know, all that does is Febreze the stink of reality. Which is that the hole's only gotten bigger. So all of a sudden you have this huge crater the size of the universe. And how do you fill it? Mm -hmm. And I realized that the process of filling that hole is what life is all about. Yes. That is life. Yes. And that's it. Uh So it's it can't be three months. It's not there's no time limit. But and I for me, and this isn't this same for everybody for me filling that hole had everything to do with beginning to love myself and beginning to love myself had everything to do with becoming a kinder person who helps others and i love it Kristen johnston <gasps> I, I can't this is the, i can't believe this is the most serious interview i've ever done and it's with you two <laughs> honestly well it takes friends to drag that stuff go out figure sometimes. well yeah. thank you so much it was thank you really fantastic I, i'm sure a lot of people will get a lot I know I've it. gotten a lot out Thank of it. Thank you so, so much. Fantastic. I love you guys so much. Oh, Thank you for you having too, me. Baby. Thank you. Well, kids, until next time, Michelle. Rue. Bye. 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 <laughs> can I get an amen? If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Amen. Hey, hey,